Hi guys, today we're going to take a deeper dive into the VR stations section in your dashboard. You can access the VR stations page by going to administration and from the simple view clicking on the VR stations button or under the advanced view you're going to go to the VR, the arcade setup tab and click on VR stations and that will take you to the VR stations section. From here, you get a bit of information, specifically at the top here. We've got the UR, I'm sorry, the local IP address of the proxy, uh, which may or may not be on one of your stations. If you were to look at the uh, local IP addresses of the stations, uh, you want to, of course, make sure that it's on the same subnetwork as it is in this case. That's the first line of defense if you have a communication issue to make sure that it's all on the same, uh, same network. Uh, another thing to note is if it is on a station, it will highlighted here which station that the proxy is on. It is also highlighted down here on that station. Uh, if it is not on one of your stations, as we do recommend having it on a separate PC, uh, it will not indicate that. This little icon here indicates that any desk is installed and ready to be accessed. You also have a note as to what version of the, uh, the proxy you are on. Uh, and this currently is the latest as of this recording. Uh, if you are behind, it will tell you if you need to update the proxy, and that's one place that it will tell you that. Looking down here, we've got a few different columns of information. The left column with the number, that is the unique identifying number of that particular station. So if we need to identify it in some specific manner, that will be the way to do that. And then we've got some information here. Some of, it, some of this can be edited, like the name of the station is editable. Uh, right now we have this separated as uh, set up as is. Uh, and you also have a notification if one of the stations needs an upgrade. It'll tell you the version of uh, the, the synthesis VR that's on there, and it will also tell you if you need to update it. It'll also tell you when the station was last online, as well as uh, any uh, pertinent um, subscription information here. The next column will tell you the IP address of the station, regardless of whether it's local or not. That will be the uh, the private IP address of that particular PC. Uh, so in this case, they're all on the same subnetwork, just like the proxy, which happens to be on station one. The next column will tell you the software that might be installed. So in this case, we have which Android version. Down here, we have the, um, the uh, Steam ID, as well as potentially the uh, the Steam VR version, which currently I don't have running, so it doesn't show which version is installed on here. Uh, it'll also tell you if any desk is accessible and which can be reached by uh, clicking here. And it also tells you if there's a pending uh, Windows update. In this case, this PC has a pending Windows update that I have not applied. You also note, just a, as a side note here, that the Virtual Station 3 is a virtual station. It is not a physical station. It is subscribed to the, uh, the um, subscription, but it is not doesn't have any hardware for it to show or any software for it to show. So the IP address is, of course, a fake one, uh, and there's no hardware or software information. Speaking of hardware, under the hardware column, we've got a variety, of, again, of, of information. And if you hover over each of the bits of information, it'll tell you a little bit more about it. So we have things like the uh, the Ethernet, the video card, the CPU is being used, the memory, and if the headset is attached or has been attached, it will tell you which what the serial number is of that uh, headset. And then finally, the last column here, the second to last column really, uh, in terms of information, this is the last column, it'll tell you what experience types are set for this particular uh, station. So this particular one has the quest experience type. This has a variety, this has a variety, and this has a couple. So each station could have its own experience type or be connected to its own experience type, and they can be different. So let's go ahead and edit one of these, and we'll talk about some of the stuff inside of there. So we'll edit the virtual station and show you some of that. So you have, of course, several tabs, and in the first tab, the settings tab, this is where you can change the name of the station. So if you want to name it something else, so this could be virtual station one versus virtual station three, I can change that. If I need to update the MAC address, I can update it here. This is useful for changing hardware or changing uh, PCs and you want to move a, uh, a subscription. And essentially the MAC address is how we identify, how we match rather or attach the station to the subscription. So the MAC address is very important to be accurate.
3D environment, if you want to have a 3D environment launch when a session launches, then you can choose it here. And this is again station independent, so you could potentially have different uh, 3D environments for each station if you want to. The most popular one right now is the Little Planet launcher, and Rhythmatic is a great alternative to that as well. Or you can go with none if you don't want a 3D launcher. Down here you can assign or remove experience types. So if you want to add more experience types or if you want to remove experience types, you can do that there. Uh, own station parameters, uh, we don't have a guide on that yet. There is a few things that you might use there. And specifically, we have it for uh, free roam. They might, you might have the um, own station parameters. Additionally, speaking of free roam, uh, the um, most use case scenario for a game server where we do have a module for the game server, uh, there will be some additional settings for the game server once you assign it, which I don't have this set up right now, but that has its own knowledge base article as well and may have a video in the future. Uh, if you want to auto update the access point, you can certainly turn that on here and that will auto update the, uh, the station when a new update is released. Under the info tab, we have the IP address of the station. Again, this is mostly useful. This, uh, this and the MAC address, generally when you install the access point would just get uh, would detect it and it would uh, apply them. But if you are moving PCs, or in this case, setting up a virtual PC, you need to set up an IP address, which does not have to be accurate in the case of a virtual. But if you are moving the PC, you wanna make sure that the MAC address and the IP address, uh, although not 100% necessary in the IP address, is accurate. Uh, game user is just again something that gets pulled from the PC and it will just take the name of the station uh, or the name of the user account rather uh, and apply it here. Uh, same with the game pass although that's not a required and uh, that's not a required thing. Uh, put in a zone. So this is a, an interesting point because this is a work in progress as some of you may already know uh, Synthesis VR is always in active development and is always taking customer feedback and trying to apply it. In this particular case, this is a work in progress, so I can't give you too much information on that, although we are looking at uh, splitting up stations, especially for larger arcades that have more stations, splitting them up into zones and seeing how we can utilize that. So not much information there, but again, you can see that this is an active, uh, actively developed software. Streaming, we won't go too much into details, but you do have the option of uh, entering whatever information might be necessary for streaming, specifically for the mixed cast, uh, or for OBS, where uh, you might enter some of the OBS information. There. there is some setup on the OBS side, so uh, this is not a uh, one-click sort of a thing until you've set up the information correctly on OBS, and then this information here will be necessary for that. And lastly, under the Advanced tab, uh, again, stuff that you can certainly explore. Uh, if you don't want games to be launched when um, uh, via like Steam or directly through Steam or Shortcut, you'd want to set this to uh, yes. And this is a little bit, uh, uh, this next one is more try at your own risk sort of thing. Um, you want to, if you don't want to have the 2D menu included in the Steam uh, VR uh, menu system you can just say uh, yes to this that way it won't show up there and then people would be forced to uh, you'd probably have to be forced to launch them directly yourself versus have them be able to launch it uh, if you have any desk installed putting the any desk ID here would be helpful to us uh, I believe that this actually also gets imported if you have uh, any desks installed and that will pull that information. What isn't pulled is the uh, unattended access password. So if you wanted unattended support, uh, it's useful if you can set this as, um, uh, set the password here so that we can log in overnight and not have to bother you for the password uh, if we need to log in for support. And lastly, multiplayer priority. Multiplayer priority will uh, give, when, you're, when you have a game that requires a server set up on a uh, local station versus a, a separate game server, this would decide which station you would want to have set up in terms of priority as the server. So this being one, if I launch a game that includes this station, then this station would act as the server most likely. And then if it was a 10 and another station was set to one, 
then that station would most likely uh, launch as the server. So basically, this would be good if you have mix of different hardware uh, and one is better than the other and you want to try to prioritize them so that the better hardware starts first and starts the server and that way it's uh, just more likely to maintain a connection, uh, a reliable connection from there. And then after you've edited everything, of course, you can click on save and that will save the station information. Now note that uh, most changes will trigger an automatic uh, access point refresh, but it's always recommended to go in and do a manual refresh yourself if you want to, or from the, your arcade page, you can trigger a refresh by clicking the gear icon here and then sending a refresh to all the stations at which point it will set a trigger a, uh, a refresh on those stations. Uh, and of course you can do that locally at the station or you can do it in this case, like I showed remotely as well. That's pretty much it for the deep dive of the VR station section. As always, if you have any questions, uh, you can send them to info at synthesisvr.com. Otherwise, have a great day. We'll talk to you soon.